Hello, and thank you for tuning in today. This video is going to cover a variation on Bruce Hurst's vibrating casting table. Up until this point, I really didn't feel the need for a vibrating casting table. I was getting perfectly good results by simply using a rubber mallet on the table that I was casting on. However, Bruce recently released his in accessory molds number 57, 58, and 59. And as he clearly states, there are a lot of tiny bits within these molds, and it really does require a vibrating table. Now, Bruce had originally set his table up so that the vibrating massager was on top of it. I decided to swap that out and put it, the vibrating massager underneath the table, thereby giving me more space. So let's see how I went about doing that. We start off with a piece of wafer board. This is a two foot by two foot uh, piece, approximately half an inch thick. We cover that with a scrap piece of floor vinyl. And I did this simply because I wanted to add a little bit of protection to the top of the uh, table to prevent the plaster from adhering to it and warping the wafer board because wafer board, once it gets wet, has a nasty tendency to really come apart. So we lay out the vinyl, and then we put the wafer board on top of it. We mark the dimensions of the wafer board onto the vinyl. Then we simply cut that out. There we got a good piece to glue down. And for gluing it down, we're using this uh, sheet flooring adhesive along with a trowel that is specifically designed for applying floor adhesive. It's a pretty straightforward process. You just slop down the adhesive and then use the trowel to spread it out. Once uh, you have the adhesive spread out, you take this little roller, you run it across the surface of the vinyl to get it to uh, fully adhere down onto the wafer board. I should state that it isn't necessary to do this. It's just something that I did. You can do any theme and variation thereof. Now that we have the vinyl glued onto the wafer board, we're going to go ahead and flip it over. And here you can see I have the vibrating massager strapped down. Now we put foam underneath it to kind of lessen the impact of the uh, vibrations and also to help kind of hold the massager into place and to protect the two vibrating pads up at the top of the uh, unit. We noticed that they were getting scuffed without it. Now I went ahead and used the straps, the black nylon straps as Bruce did. However, I noticed that we still had a lot of play in it. What I've done here is that those white straps are in fact plumber's strapping, I believe it's called. You can get it at Lowe's or Home Depot. I would suggest that over the metal strapping simply because it'll tear up the massage unit uh, casing. So once we have that massage unit in place, oh, and I should point out that the uh, foam underneath the massager is hot glued into place. There we have a close-up. You can see straps, buckles, secured with a wood screw. And then the rest of the strap is cut away from that and it's secured on the other side of the massage unit with an additional wood screw for both straps. Here I've rough cut out a six inches worth of seat cushion foam, the same type of foam that uh, Bruce uses in his plans. I think it's called new foam. We used six inches because we wanted to make sure that we had plenty of clearance between the table and the top of the massage unit. I apologize for the meowing kitty in the background. Somebody's having an attitude. <laughs> Little background music there. Here's another angle on that. Once you have the uh, foam rough cut out, we take the hot glue gun and we start gluing the foam into place in layers. Once you have the glue on, you take the foam, you press it down. It doesn't have to be massive force. This stuff is pretty sticky and it does a reasonable job. I'm sure there's better adhesives. I was just wanting to get this video out quickly and get this project done quickly, so I used hot glue. 
Here we have a scrap piece of wall paneling that I cut out, and this will actually form the base of the table unit. We flip it over and put it on top of the foam there. And again, we're going to use hot glue to secure it onto the foam. And here the unit is pretty much completed. And here the unit is with the base glued on, the foam all in place. You'll notice that we have plenty of clearance there and that we have access to the button to turn the massage unit on as well as the intensity control knob for how strong the massager is operating at. I used some weather stripping around the edges of the tabletop. And this is basically there just in case, you know, we have some plaster uh, moving towards the edge to keep it from, you know, dripping down onto the foam and onto the floor and stuff. We decided to go ahead and put that in place to kind of act as a dam. Here you can see that we have the torpedo level on top of the table. It's level. And we go ahead and we clamp this unit to the table so it doesn't shift while we're uh, casting the molds. Now I know I went to all the trouble of putting on the vinyl along with uh, the weather stripping and then I go ahead and throw a plastic sheet over the top of it. This is just basically to prolong the life of uh, the whole unit. It really does make cleanup a lot easier. The weather stripping along the sides still ensures that any excess plaster doesn't go over the edges of the table. Here's my setup. The black rubber bowl is very flexible. I got that from Micromark. The sifter helps break up the plaster as I'm putting it into the bowl with the water. So that makes uh, mixing it up a lot easier and it uh, keeps it from clumping. The Almore surfactant is used on the molds to ensure that it breaks up the surface tension and helps release any bubbles would normally occur. I do my castings with a irrigation syringe. I forget how many cc's that one is. It's pretty good sized. You can normally do an entire mold with it with relative ease. I'm going to go ahead and wait on posting up uh, the pictures and doing basically a review of the in accessories molds number 57, 58, and 59 for another video. I really just wanted to show the method that I put this vibrating table together, show it in use. My thoughts on it after doing 10 pours is that there is a significant decrease in bubbles. Moreover, I would say that not having to spend the time pounding on the table with the mallet speeds things up, makes it a lot more fun to do. This casting table is something that I'll be using for all of my pours from this point on, kind of kicking myself for not having done this much sooner. Well, that wraps it up for me. Again, thanks for tuning in. I hope this helps. Play games and have fun.